I'm having a hard time remembering this song. I know, me too. Yeah. I am the tiger. It's the chicken. I am the tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. I say, I'm the best. I'm the best. Hey guys and welcome to another episode of the Up Real Late Podcast. This week we are on episode 22. My name is Scott Ellis. I'm joined here as always by Tim McGavick. What's going on Tim? Uh, I just bought a condo. Oh, oh get hype. Boom. Boom. I have a new recording studio, just saying. Oh. <laughs> get hype. Also here, Tyler Switalski. Well, I also have some pretty big news. My car is leaking massive amounts of oil. Oh, God. And it needs Fuck. to be repaired. Oh, God. So also, big news, guys. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. And Adam Franey. Big news. Uh, you? I can't top either of those. Uh, I'm here to talk about movies. And I like movies. Well, that's, that's what counts. That's, that's what counts. Terrible, man. Um, let's just actually, <laughs> let's just run into, run down our couple of topics we're going to talk about this week. Um, as always, we're going to do our last scene, uh, last movie we saw. And this week we're doing two movies that came out this week. First being Creed, uh, the next installment, next film in the Rocky franchise, I guess, let's say, sort of continuation. Um, and also, uh, an Oscar contender, Spotlight, uh, that came, also came out this week. Um, and we're also going to get into some news later. Primarily, the Civil War trailer, uh, Captain America Civil War trailer, came out this week, so we're gonna get in, into that. And if you guys want to skip ahead to any of those uh, topics that I just mentioned, um, you can go in the description box below and click on any of the timestamps, and you can skip ahead. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, let's get into our last scenes, guys. Uh, anyone want to start us off this week? Uh, Tim. I, oh. Oh, Tim, <laughs> stick with you? Tim, no, it's cool. Tim, you go first. Might as well go for most recent. Because yeah. I did just finish watching. I know you this just watched like an this. hour ago. Holy. What was the last movie you saw, Tim? I watched Jeez. the 2013 um, film. Oh, the the 2013 film. Those were the one. No, I'm kidding. You mean 2012? Um, no. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Sean Cusack. Sorry, I got the nice. numbers wrong here. No, okay, you're... I watched a 20 a 2013 film that was nominated for best foreign film. Ooh. The suspense is coming. Did not win. Did not. Um, this was written and directed by a man named Zera Ustazi. It's an Estonian and Georgian film. Oh boy. Called Tangerines. Tangerines. Okay. Starring nice. Lembit Olfsak, Georgi uh, Nakashidzi, Almo Nuganen, and Mikhail Meshki. Bravo. An old man. Nailed it. Ivo and his friend Margus take in two injured soldiers, Ahmed and Nico, from opposite sides of a war. As they begin to heal, tensions, tensions grow as the two men have promised not to kill each other while in his home. Interesting. So basically there's a war that's broken out in, um, I think it's, it's in Georgia, but it's in an area that's mostly inhabited by Estonian people. So Ivo and Margus are Estonian. Ahmed is a Chechen, um, He's actually like a mercenary. He's been hired, and he gets injured, and they take him in. And then Nico is a Georgian, so they're opposite sides. Is this like set like current, like in current? This times, is ninety or? set in ninety three or ninety four. Oh, okay, so yeah. pretty close. Though. So it's pretty close. Um, the whole thing takes place on this little village, or his little not even village. It's Ivo's house in Margo's in Mar in, in Marcus's house. Um, the title comes from uh, the fact that Margus has a tangerine farm. And he's been working with Ivo, who's making crates for him, to get as much ten, uh, tangerines out of the area they, as they can before they decide to leave Estonia, because I guess it's really good money. Sure. Um, so this war kind of hits them in their front door, and it's kind of like a character study. It's um, a big thing about pacifism and, you know, kind of like getting over just like killing for the sake of killing type thing. Um, some really cool scenes, really funny scenes as well as a little bit of humor. Um, all four characters are awesome. They're so likable in this. They're so it's great. pretty. It's pretty contained. Like pretty. Yeah, it literally doesn't. It, Margus house and uh, Ivo's house are like a hundred meters away, and you don't leave that little circle. That's Interesting. It. Yeah. Um, some other soldiers pop up here. I hear. Uh, I hear in there some tension scenes. I think you stuff. told me about this movie before. I this got what? mentioned on Film Vault. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. Um, okay. About probably last year, I guess, or the year before. Um, Anderson loved it. I loved it as well. Shout yeah. out to Film Vault. 
I've always, I've always been. I, I always look at those foreign film nominee categories in the Oscars. And I'm like, this all these They're movies I haven't seen. They're always kind of hit seen. and miss, right? There's always ones that like. But there's some good movies there that I feel like a lot of people yeah, overlook yeah. because they're foreign films. Yeah. The Hunt. Hello. Exactly, yeah. Same year, right? The Hunt? No? 2013? I don't know. I, I thought thought the Hunt was even up for best foreign film. Really? I think I, that I, might I have been the big assumed. Stuff. To me, it was. Um, At the Atomies, it was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It won at the Atomies. <laughs> the Atomies. Interesting. Yeah. Sounds awful. Uh, it's it's my show. It's Perhaps it's, you've heard of it. Nice. Uh, I haven't, but... Yeah, Great for sure. I'm sure it'll pick up. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna hit this thing with a four reeler. Damn. Quite enjoyed it. Quite, enjoyed, quite it. enjoyed that really? character study though. Yeah. That yeah. character study. Interesting. Is it like is there like a thriller element? is it intense? Is there any violence or anything like that? Like, There's some violence. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like between the two guys? I'm just so intrigued. I don't is there know. between the two guys? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> we gotta see <laughs> and find out, I guess. Find out. Wow. Gosh darn it. Very interesting little movie. Well, who wants to jump in with their uh, next last scene? Ty? I don't know. I got brutally cut off last time. I'm not oh. sure if I want to talk about it now. So yeah, I saw this in 2013. No, no. I want to go, Tim. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. Okay, okay, Tim, go okay. again. I can just go again. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for us this week, Ty? All right. This week, a tough detective matches wits with a cunning bank robber. As a tense hostage crisis is unfolding. Into the volatile situation comes a woman named Madeline, a mysterious power broker who has a hidden agenda and threatens to push a tense situation past the breaking point. Franny, you're looking perplexed right now. I'm I thought so there was perplexed. Heat at first. No. no. The other thing Inside no. Man? I don't know. Inside Man. Really? Yes. I'm like three I'm... in a row now. I'm, yeah. Oh my God, I'm killing it. Spike Lee's Inside Man starring Clive Denzel. Owen, Denzel Washington, Denzel. Jodie Foster, Christopher Plummer, Willem Dafoe, and Chiwete Ijuafar. What a cast. I don't remember having Huge that cast. Huge cast. Holy shite. Huge cast. Wow. I didn't realize Willem Dafoe and Edgy Ford were in it. Yeah, I didn't even like. I didn't even think about. Uh, I saw it in theaters. Like that's when I saw it. Yeah, I haven't seen it since. Um, great. Okay, here's the thing. I can't say too much about this movie. It being a heist movie, I can't really talk about the like anything that really went on because spoilers. Yeah, huge, huge potential for spoilers. Is that a heist? It is a heist. Oh. It is a heist movie. Heist. Even that might be too much. I'm not sure. Um, but <laughs> it's it, a movie that might be too much. Very, I, Something you guys don't know about me, you guys know I love the Bond movies. Love, the, love, like I love explosions, action movies. Yes, um, do. yes I, I do enjoy some musicals. I haven't talked to you guys about that yet. Oh God, but Ooh, Mamma Mia! But oh, I do love Mamma Mia so much. But I, I love heist movies because they make like they. You're always thinking, but at the end of the movie, it doesn't matter how hard you thought about it. Doesn't matter. You love heist movies. Love them. Get your book out. Oh, <laughs> oh. Okay. I assume you haven't seen this. Okay. Yeah. Dog Day right. Afternoon. Oh, I have not seen Dog yeah. Day Afternoon. You Check that one out. That, boom. On the list. With with heist movies, there's always that element where you think you have it figured out. Yeah. And then there's always that twist at the end where you're like, someone had this master plan all along and there's like a Shyamalan twist at the end. Yeah. You had no idea. And so It's hit and miss for me. Sometimes I'm like, really? Like, yeah. really? That was it? Like, yeah. you're just going to pull the rug under us like yeah. that? Like, there's no like gratification a lot of the times i actually but, with, with the heist movies i actually have to watch like, you have to watch them twice because you just, it just fucks with your mind so much you, you've got to rewatch them yeah sometimes it pays off though and i remember adam at <laughs> tim just giggling away <laughs> i'm sorry listen i just looked i just looked up and adam looked like such a scumbag <laughs> <laughs> that's I, that's all the time what do you, i don't understand just because i was sprawled out listening to his rendition of Inside Man. Scratching yourself, Fox probably. Matches. I wasn't Gotta looking. Say, I was scratching my barrel. I love this movie, too. Yes. I don't know if you love really? it. Really? Yeah. But I love this movie, yeah. I'm assuming you really liked it. Have Who? you seen it, Scott? Yeah. Sorry, I'm jumping in here. Have you <laughs> seen it? Yeah, I have seen I've it. I've seen it's it. Cool. Just We've all seen this movie, then. I don't remember anything about it. I don't know if it's really? or not. Why don't you tell well, me? It's years ago. It was like yeah. 2006, some of that? Memory it was 2016. 2016. 2006. Ooh, Dead on. on. Dead on. Nine years ago. So, yeah. What'd you, what'd think, you think? Great movie. I'm giving this one a light four reels. All right, Scott, on to you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, Thanks, man. Hey, I liked yeah. it too. I, I I remember, you know, when I watched it, I remember like really enjoying it. Like, but you, again, I haven't seen it in nine years, I guess. The thing that like this this one like differentiates from all other heist movies to me because like 
usually in the other heist movies, you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Like, you know, you, 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 they kind of lay out the pathwork for something that's going to happen. Always, this one, yeah. nothing. Yeah, there's lots of twists. Really? Yeah, like you have no idea what's going on the entire movie. I've seen this movie. But Jodie Foster comes in, you got no idea what the hell's going on with her. Christopher Plummer's mysterious as shit. Like, just so much going on. Clive Owen, incredibly elusive. I don't remember much, but it's one of those movies yeah, where, like, great in this movie. someone you think is good the entire time, like, ends up being bad, like, yeah. it's on the other side. There is an inside man. Yeah. And yeah. Quote, someone, unquote. like, yeah. where you think is, like, let's go, we're gonna go, and then just turns, like, that kind of movie, you know, yeah. and just, like, shoots someone, like... I don't remember that happening, mm-hmm. but I remember there was something like that. There was something like you, that happened, you, I'm sure. But. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Would you put it... Well, are you a fan of Spike Lee? Polarizing Kinda, kinda yes. I haven't seen enough, his work, enough of his work to say to really say if I'm a huge fan I, of From him. what I understand, I think this is like in the upper echelon of his movies. It's well received. Like I'm, yes, I know people very are, well received. I'm not a huge Rotten fan. Rotten Tomatoes gave it uh, another 86%. 86%. 86%. Yeah. I've seen like two probably. of his movies, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen a, a movie coming out uh, this year, Chirac. I don't know if you guys have heard I've about heard that. Heard about it? I have yeah. not. Um, Spike Lee directed movie. Um, it's getting really good reviews. Is it getting really? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. It's, it's controversial. Kind of, it's an interesting movie. It, it's sort of, it's an adaptation of an ancient Greek play, but set in modern day. Interesting. What? Chicago. I, thought, I literally thought it was a documentary about Chicago. No, like you'd hood. think so. You'd think so. It's actually wow. based on an ancient Greek play. Oh, really? And he like changed it, the setting and everything. It's kind of like that um, uh, Romeo and Juliet, like Leo Di- Leonardo DiCaprio like thing, yeah. where they like change the setting. Yeah, it's the like same Lion thing. King? Yes, like Hamlet. <laughs> wow. Did that just blow your mind? <laughs> Shit! Holy Whoa! Smokes. There you go, guys. Enjoy that one. Mind equals blown. <laughs> wow. Get wrecked. Well. All right, circle I think... of life. Right? <laughs> you guys no, gotta I... give me a second to get over that. <laughs> yeah, my I'm gonna, brain. I'm gonna jump in with my last scene, okay. uh, if you don't mind. Uh, no, I'll Frame. just shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's just <laughs> let's just run down uh, the little synopsis here. In a future world cool. devastated by disease, a convict is sent back in time to gather information oh, snap. about the man-made virus that wiped out most of the human population on the planet. <laughs> this is 12 Monkeys yeah. uh, Ah Bruce Willis Directed by Terry Gilliam uh, Starring Bruce Willis Madeline Stowe Brad Pitt oh. And Christopher Plummer um, Christoper Plummer Oh Yeah Ty's time. 12 yeah. Monkeys You know this is a movie that I've Hard you know, Plummer episode It's Wow Yeah Wow I, Yeah he was in uh, Inside Man Yeah that would, Yeah that's what I meant He's not on anything else yet. <laughs> I didn't make that connection talking about plumbing yeah. yeah I was like Plumbing What what did that have to nah. plumbing? Um, this movie, I've just been wanting to see this for a long time. It's like That's on all sure. those lists of like best like time travel movies and stuff. And I'm like, Twelve Monkeys. Like, what's that about? I don't no idea. I finally watched it this week. I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I I didn't love it, but I think it was it was pretty good. Like the plot, the w- the way the plot goes. Like I don't know. It was kind of like crazy at times, but at the end, there's some payoffs that I really enjoyed. I haven't seen this. It's on my list. You don't say. It, you know what? <laughs> have any of you guys seen it? You, no. You guys must have seen it. I love 12 Monkeys. You <laughs> love 12 Monkeys. Love 12 Monkeys. I don't, I don't love 12 Monkeys. You don't. I think it's... Spectrum. Here. So, so... <laughs> love it. Don't love it. I haven't seen it. It's it's average for me. Like, I'm kind of in, be- I'm, I'm in between. I'm, I'm... It's like a light three for me. What do you, what do you give it, Tim? Like a four. Okay. Maybe I have you four. I'm kind of, I'm I'm kind of in between. Again, I have a sci-fi balance or of course balance bias bias. bias. I'm kind of in between. I'm in between you guys. I'm like really? I'm treading yeah. between a three and a heavy three. Okay, uh, delve into your problems. Is it too wacky? It's kind of crazy. Like a little, I remember it feeling dated because I watched this like a year ago. Cheesy, I think is what I, I think I remember seeing the, a clip, and I think I remember it being cheesy. The the future. That Bruce Bruce Willis is the is the main sort of character here. Um, the future that he comes from is sort of way. It's a little bit cartoony, like it's it's like kind of like a steampunk future. Right, I remember that. And yeah. you know, it didn't. I didn't really buy into that, mm-hmm. and it was it was a little bit too like forced. I'm trying to think of a comparison movie here. Like, I kept thinking of like fifth, maybe the Bruce Willis, but like Fifth Element, mm-hmm. kind of like weird, goofy, like futurism. Yeah. 
it is kind of I can see why people don't love it. It is kind of like a weird, wacky sort of movie. It's like because Gillian Terry um, has Terry really Terry, oh, yeah, sorry. Gillian yeah. Terry. <laughs> I'm tired, man. <laughs> he has a really like wacky way of directing, like Brazil, and he's part of Monty Python. Yeah. And I don't know if he would have been the best fit to do Twelve Monkeys. I feel like if you gave it to a different director, like Fincher, doing this, like in the '90s oh, or something. Oh would have been or sweet. like um, imagine like that would be amazing. Uh, Alfonso Cuaron like or something like that did, like, yeah, yeah, Man, like that yeah. future yeah imagine that with like a 12 monkeys yeah. like with that 12 monkeys plot yeah because the plot's great but the I can plot... see why like the sets are kind of wacky and the they're, costumes they're... are a little bit wacky the plot sometimes like whoa what's like this is like crazy but at, then the base plot that happens like it's it's pretty good like I like the twists and turns it takes I could see like there is one twist. Yeah, it's really obvious. Like had to do with yeah. the twelve monkeys. Yeah. That I didn't really see that coming. Like oh, I was like, okay, yeah, that one I didn't see coming. Like sort of ne- like right like I'm near lost. the end. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Were well, there actual uh, monkeys in there? We'll talk about it later. There's no monkeys. Oh, we'll wow. talk. We'll here. talk about the twist later. <laughs> um, just to s- save you guys who are listening uh, from the twist, and I didn't really see what sort of the end end game was at the beginning. Because there's some flashbacks, there's some dreams and weird stuff going on. But um, interesting kind of tie-in here. There's um, there's a gym in Creed, which we'll get into, okay. where they where they filmed the exterior. Mm-hmm. This yes. exterior, they do go to Philadelphia in uh, 12 Monkeys. Uh, uh, this no. exterior where they shot the fuck? is oh, in geez. 12 Monkeys really? as well. Cool. No. Ties tie-in. It's, tie it's where the 12 it. Monkeys... Love it. Well, I won't say anything. How did you, like, wow, that's insane. Well, because we just saw, I saw it, like, the day after I saw Creed. Oh, okay, okay. And I was like, <gasps> this is the same. <laughs> there's, like, the train, Bruce. there's, like, the subway overpass yeah, on like, top of the street, and there's the gym with the corner, like, the angular, like, with the door right in the corner. Yeah, it's a corner. Exact same, like, location. It's pretty, it's pretty clear, right? Cool, awesome. Random, Love ties it. tie in Amazing. there, Scott's tie in. I, we'd be hey, remiss. No, you, don't, you, don't hijack Tyler. You can't take that. <laughs> okay? Well, I can't say you? Ty's tie-in because you didn't tie it in. But so, uh, yeah. we It was named that. after him. I guess. All right. It's my thing. Right, we can't right. blame him. He didn't see Creed. You know what? Oh, oh we weren't, spoiler we didn't get alert. To that spoiler alert, fans. <laughs> we didn't get to that yet. More we'll get that. to that. We'll get to that. More of that later. <laughs> to sort of you know, piggyback up what you were starting to say there, Adam... I would be remiss without mentioning Brad Pitt's performance. How did you know I was going to say that? Because he got nominated for an Oscar. What? For this? this movie. Oh, yeah, he did. I had Oscar no nomination. Idea. Oscar nominated. My boy B. Pitt? Oscar Damn. nominated. It's the worst nickname ever. Wild. He was wild yeah. in this. I wrote Pitt's performance down right here. He's a wild boy. Because yeah. he was like crazy, like wacky, twitchy, like <laughs> insane outrageous. Pitt. Outrageous. It, it looks like one of his eyes is bigger than the they other. They did. Yeah. He, he definitely had a contact in one eye. Is that what, one, oh, yeah, one, yeah, one people like, was like, bigger one than the other. Like completely died. Like, like I was trying to figure out, like, how yeah. did they do that? He had like long hair and a ponytail, like crazy, like insane asylum, like pit. It was like Just going nuts. My God, he was this. he was pretty fantastic. He kind of stole the scenes. He, he was for in. sure. To- like, yeah, scene stealer. Definition of a scene yeah. stealer. Um, yeah. Overall, I enjoyed it. Um, it's a good sort of mid nineties. It came out in nineteen ninety five, so I think it's twenty years old for that. Yeah. For a twenty-year-old sci-fi time travel movie, this is pretty good. So, which tend to get dated pretty quickly. They do. Yeah. They yeah. do. Um, and you can kind of see that after seeing this. But I, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna go heavy three with this. Nice um, for sure. Heavy three. Heavy three. Heavy three. Franny, hit us up. Adam, what was the last movie you saw? Let's go over to you. Ah, uh, well, I Mr. guess Mr. Greaseball uh, himself. Come on, what do you got? I'm finally up to bat. Am I? <laughs> yes, yeah. This is you. Well, I have a little tie-in Oof. this week. My last scene directly ties into Creed because I watched Rocky six Rocky movies this week <laughs> and I'm going to review Rocky Balboa. No, you didn't. I swear to God. You watched six Rocky movies. I watched all six. No, you like, didn't. Other, and Creed. I watched seven Rocky movies this week. No, 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 no. no. Get the fuck Scott's out Scott's having a meltdown. Wow. Wow. I can't believe this. <laughs> this is I've like mocking been, jail over here. My face is melting I'm right being now. being accused of lying. Debauchery. <laughs> Um, I'll just quickly like say what I. Th- <laughs> this is daunting. I'm just gonna quickly uh, say what I thought of them all. First one, loved it. This is obviously again the first time I'm seeing any of these, right? Mm-hmm. 
I just oh, really? okay. remember last week how you guys said like the Rambo series. You're just like, why would I really watch that? It just looks cheesy. That's how I felt about Rocky. I just I've only ever seen clips of them like boxing from but. them and like the running up the stairs and all that shit. Yeah, mm. like yeah, it's cheesy. <laughs> but I watched the first one. Great. Yeah, yeah the cheesy. first one was up yeah. to best picture, it's good. best writer. Yeah, oh, one best that. picture, best director. Wow. Uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone starred and wrote it. Yeah. Um, it was nominated for best score. Just Oscars across the board. Great score. Mm-hmm. I loved it Obviously. because like I think the key to a good blockbuster it has to be done with like an indie heart and soul behind it and then it takes off yeah. and blows up and kind of becomes a blockbuster right that's what this movie did like this like the first rocky wasn't some like iconic thing the way the franchise is now it was like a little movie small about a boxer like you know trying trying to make it yeah just like a, a underdog story yeah. like stallone literally came up with it on his own like this is entirely his movie uh it stars and these are mostly a recurring cast of Sly Stallone, Talia Shire. I mean. Talia Shire, yeah. Talia Shire as Adrian. Burt Young as Polly. Carl Weathers as Apollo Creed. Burgess Meredith as Mick. And uh, a few others that I don't remember. So I'm not going to say them right now. Um, yeah, I love the first one. I'd give it like a four out of five reels. Nice. Um, second one... I would say a bit of a step down. Still really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm, should I? I guess I should avoid spoilers. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like 40 years old. But I mean, it's it's not a spoiler. It's a rematch with Apollo Creed. That's I guess I should say the synopsis of the first one. You know, underdog boxer Rocky's given the chance of a lifetime to take on the heavyweight champ of the world and Apollo Creed. That's just the vague synopsis. Second one is the rematch, and they form a. The best bromance of the 80s, one might say. Or 70s, I should say. First one, fun fact, first one came out in 1975. 40th anniversary of the first one, Creed. Dropped in 2015. Wow. Beast. Beast mode. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, the second one was a bit of a step down, but it was still really enjoyable. I'd give it a heavy three. Um, The third one was starting to jump the shark a little bit Rocky's just an established boxer and he takes on like Hulk Hogan as like a charity event at the beginning have you guys seen them all? yeah Yeah, I've seen most of them I haven't seen Rocky Balboa Tim's shaking his head right now I've seen the first one that's about it oh you've only seen the first one I've seen one through five I'm familiar with like the famous scenes from the rest like the Dolph Lundgren stuff and the Carl Weathers stuff but besides that one through five I haven't seen Rocky Balboa yet Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen Rocky Balboa. You haven't either. I've only seen like the first like three. All right. Well. Yeah. Anchor. Um. The third one, and then he fights Mr. Like T. It. Whatever. It's pretty good. Light three. Uh, I'm just zooming through these. Rocky four. Ivan Drago. Dolph Lundgren. I will break. You. I will break you. For me, this is where it started to uh, jump the fridge. <laughs> nuke the fridge. <laughs> nuke the fridge. I just yeah. mixed jump the shark and nuke the fridge. It's where it jumped the fridge. <laughs> and then you nuke shark. <laughs> jump the shark nuke and the shark. nuke the fridge. My bad. Nuke the fridge shark. Nuke the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> nuke the shark. Um, jump over the nuked fridge shark. <laughs> yeah, it was really so dated, like so 80s, the whole Cold War, like Russia versus America. Um, one of the biggest events of the entire series takes place in this movie, so you have to uh, you have to see it if you're going to like rewatch the entire series. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. I say what no. that event no. is? No. Nope. All right. Can, you can say it. No, what? I'll just say if he dies, he dies. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, a bit ridiculous. I'd probably give it a heavy two. There is, I timed it, a nine minute training montage in this movie <laughs> of Rocky in Russia just training in a cabin. I remember that. Yeah, it's outrageous. I, I was like, this is the longest training montage I've ever seen. <laughs> um, he also buys Polly a robot in this movie. In yeah. case you didn't believe it, nuke the fridge. It. Yeah, there a you robot. go. He buys him a robot. With it's like, like a fortune. weird, like a serving kind of thing. It was very bizarre for his birthday. Yeah, <sighs> just ridiculous. And it was just kind of felt like a greatest hits album of the entire franchise up to that point. But still pretty entertaining. I'd give it again heavy two. Uh, fifth one sucks. Just Tommy Gunn. Fuck you. Uh, light two. Um, Rocky Balboa. Onto the actual last movie I saw finally caught up here 
I guess I should say, other than the first one, they were all written... Well, the first one was written by Stallone, directed by someone else. The rest of them, uh, two, right, and right up to Rocky Balboa, were directed by Stallone. And really? written by Stallone. Yeah, yeah I don't know if you guys that. knew that. Yeah. So, Rocky Balboa, 2006. Is oh, is that long ago? Yeah, nine Shit, years. Yeah, I remember seeing trailers for this and stuff. Me too. Wow. It's uh, actually a 15, no, 16 year gap between Rocky V and Rocky Balboa. Uh, 30 years after the ring of the first bell, Rocky Balboa comes out of retirement and dons his gloves for his final fight against the reigning heavyweight champ, Mason the Line Dixon. It's my Bruce Buffer for you guys. Uh, starring. Is Bruce Buffer in this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. He's, he calls the fight. Between him and Mason. That's great. I love that. Uh, same cast, Sly Stallone, Burt Young, a couple newcomers, Antonio Tarver, Geraldine, who something, I don't know her name, Milo Ventimigliano, <laughs> Tony Burton. What's her name? Shout out to what's her name? You and know her. Talia Shire. Shire. Shire, whatever, don't care. Uh, <laughs> I heard this movie's good, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> so I don't I love that preface. I don't though. want to bury the lead, but it's not. Uh, it's not oh, very yeah. good. I heard this was good. Me too. Shout out to Mark Walden. I was talking with him, and he was like, "Yeah, it's good, man." So when I went to watch it, I'm like, "Okay, here we go." It won the Schmoes No Biggest Surprise of That Year award. Really, this year? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And uh, the Golden Schmoes, I believe. Really. Um. Shout out to the Schmoes Note podcast. It now maybe at the time this is what I was thinking. I could see it being people liking it at the time because it'd been a sixteen year gap, but like now that I've seen Creed, I just the whole comeback of the like feel of this movie has been taken away, right? Like I don't know. I just did did the fact that you watched the other five before that, or was it four? Five. Five. Like pre- Rocky Balboa is the sixth. Yeah, the, it was, this is the fact that you watched the five previous preceding Rocky movies before this. Did that like taint seeing the sixth one, Rocky Balboa? Did that maybe it was loom a bit over of that. it because you've already seen it being played out? Like maybe the similar it was a bit story, of that. like the comeback. Yeah, I mean, because you can't like. I think it was probably a lot of nostalgia, maybe like a Phantom Menace syndrome for. Rocky Balboa. It's been so many years, like yeah, because I can't replicate a fifteen-year, sorry, sixteen-year wait. There's probably a day, like, or did days. you wait an hour before you went to the next one? No, I watched four, five, and six in the same day. I think, yeah, four, five, and six in the same day. So it was the third movie of the day. Yeah, it might have been Rocky fatigue, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it That's was crazy. <laughs> it was rough. Like there's. The main girl in the movie, I don't even know, I won't say love interest, I don't think she is, it's like mostly a platonic relationship, is supposed to be the character from the first film that he sees smoking, the thir- she's like 13, like a little girl, he walks her home and just kind of gives her like a talking to, and uh, she's... They made that tie-in? It was like... Yeah, they did. <laughs> just wild. terrible actress, just super wooden just like a zombie in this movie and I'm just like oh my god there's no chemistry between her and Stallone also if they get like a love dynamic that is so creepy and then her son (laughs) comes into the movie and he's like ah it's bad he's like mixed he kind of looks like Alan Iverson and Rocky (laughs) he's talking to his friend who's like a white guy and Rocky's like talking to her he's like oh yeah you know it's your son over there huh he looks just like you she's like oh it's the other one with the cornrows (laughs) <laughs> and like, oh, and she's like, yeah. His father was Jamaican. He's like, Jamaican, oh, European, nice. It's just like European, yeah. It's oh my God, it's just so... it's insane. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, People like this? Is this real? And it's just really boring, like lifeless movie until I guess yeah. the final. And the whole concept is he's taking on this new young cocky like Floyd Mayweather type champion, yeah, who, like young black fighter. And he's, it just also felt like, I could tell Stallone directed it, because it felt like every black character in the movie was, like, a rapper. Like, it was totally, like, a cl- like a cliche, like, st- stereotype type thing. You tell, like, an older white guy was, like, this is how young black people act. It felt, <laughs> like, very, like, inauthentic. I was like, what is going on right now? And 
Yeah, just, I don't know, I just find it really cheesy watching him in the ring in the final fight at like 50, whatever, was nine, it, he you might didn't have been buy 60. It? You didn't buy it? No, I couldn't take him seriously at all. Like, again, maybe now, like, that, that movie Grudge Match came out, like, maybe it's hard to watch him, like, and be serious in the ring at like 60 years old. Yeah, he's pretty fit though. Was he pretty fit for this? Like, mm, well, that's one thing I was gonna mention. Actually, it's funny. In the How first his physique, critique his physique. First yeah. two Rocky yes. movies, yeah, he's, pick this guy apart because <laughs> he's like a big, yeah. big dude. Yeah, but he's not shredded. He's just big. He has like mass. And then they increasing like as they go on three, four, five, he gets like shredded. Yeah, like twelve pack abs and just like veins popping out what, everywhere. What stomach? <laughs> just like just a cyborg full disclosure like he was on steroids yeah exactly i was gonna say it looked like he was on steroids he, like he actually got know. caught yeah taking steroids know. across in a plane or something yeah but yeah and uh <laughs> yeah he looks it's okay he looked good for 60 yeah. there's a few shots six. of him doing like six chin-ups in a row that was pretty intense for that's six, six more than i can do <laughs> exactly me too well i get to one usually um, throw up so not a not a huge fan yeah, yeah did definitely didn't uh didn't blow me away just wooden acting all around i think it was time for him to give up the directing reins like he did step quickly. back and let someone else take over yeah um give i'd give it a it's better than five i'll give it that i'd give it a heavy two just very mediocre heavy two just very average flat lines all right and with that Bleh. We'll move on into Creed. Um, perfect segue. Thank perfect you for segue. Me last. Um, yeah, totally planned. I know. I totally planned. planned. It. Um, I didn't actually know. That was pretty greasy uh, to watch that many Rocky movies. So that's why your letterbox was pretty silent this week. Oh, it'll be a letterbox dump right after we record this, my friend. Explosion. Letterbox explosion. Um, so yeah, let's get into Creed. Uh, this movie came out November twenty fifth. Uh, this past week, twenty fifteen. And it's the story of the former world heavyweight champion, Rocky Balboa, serves as a trainer and mentor to Adonis Johnson, the son of his late friend and former rival, Apollo Creed. So yeah, this movie's directed by Ryan Coogler. Oh, not um, Stallone, thank God. No. Not Stallone. Yeah. Uh, who also directed Fruitvale Station, um... A great film from a couple years ago, two years ago, I think now. Yeah, I think so. 2013, um, yeah. Starring, who was also the star of Fruitvale Station, Michael B. Jordan. My boy. Um, mm. Oh, can I just give a fun fact? Director Ryan Coogler, is it? Yep. Pitched Michael B. Jordan on the idea of Creed before Fruitvale Station. They were actually planning it, like, yeah. a year before that. Fantastic. That's interesting. And that was, like, at that point, like, he's, like, right out of film school, too, like... Yeah, I'm he's baffled young. that he's really young. Stallone handed over the reins to like a literally a nobody, like a Fresh unknown. Out of, yeah, <laughs> like he insane. probably done like short films. Maybe I don't know what else he's done other than that. Fruitvale was his first feature. Yeah, um, of course, Sylvester Stallone, um, <laughs> and uh, also starring Tessa Thompson, uh, Tony Bellew, and Graham McTavish, who, if you guys know, was uh, Dwalin in the Hobbit no. movies. <laughs> I know because you bumped me in the theater and said, that's Stalin from The Hobbit. That's Stalin. It's who from what? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You never he, heard of him. He was uh, Jackson the British remember. fighters uh, he, coach, trainer? Oh, that guy. Uh, okay. I thought he meant the British fighter was in The Hobbit. I thought that would have been hilarious. <laughs> that would have been amazing. We that would have been pretty good. Um, although Tony Bellew, like the, the guy who played Ricky Conlon, who was the British fighter, like he's actually a fighter in real life. I knew it. Yeah, I knew one of them had to be. He, yeah, so the acting was just too bad. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, obviously, Michael B. Jordan plays um, Adonis Johnson, Adonis Creed. You know, we'll, we'll, I don't know nice if that, alias. <laughs> yeah, um, let's get into it. What do you, what do you, let's start with I you. I think we should uh, start with Tyler. <laughs> what did you think of Creed? Well, Tyler, has, I, I, I thought the movie was crazy, guys. <laughs> So just crazy. Wild, it, was just, eh? it was just a crazy just, movie. Just, a, just all the things that happened. You know that part where he fights a shark? I did like that part. I thought it was a little weird seeing a shark in yeah. a hockey movie. But, no, but they then jumped like, the fridge. They fit in. They fit yeah, in. they jumped the fridge. <laughs> I was weird seeing a shark there, but I was like, I, I kind of dug it a little bit. There was yeah. a training. There was a training montage where he was on water skis, and then he oh. actually, <laughs> was jumped, like, he actually jumped a shark. I knew it. Like I was there. I saw. It. I, okay, so full disclosure, I did not see this movie. Yeah. Um, no. 
I, I I did see Spotlight, but I just I ran out of time in the week. My car had issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. I tried to stream it. <laughs> it right. did not work. Um, uh, so I, I didn't we see it. I, I do apologize to the podcast. You will be seeing it. I will see it. That's why I'm, I'm at, when we do spoilers, I will actually be leaving. Oh, perfect. So I'll be leaving the room because I do plan on seeing this movie. Adam, I want to start with you because you obviously now seeing the first six. <laughs> I'm the expert. Um, you have some perspective here. You are the Tyler Com- of James Bond movies. Coming from Tyler Rocky Rocky. Balboa, That's fair. in the timeline, this is obviously the next film, what are your thoughts on Creed? Do, do you like it? Is it a step up? Is Ryan Coogler a good fit here? Did he improve upon the franchise? Let's hear it. I really liked Creed. A nice. lot. A lot. I thought it was quite good. Quite good. I would say it's easily... Right off the bat, better than Rocky Five and Rocky Balboa. Um, probably my personal second favorite of the franchise, I'm going to say. I liked it a lot. It was just, I was telling this to Mark Walden again. Second shout out, bud. Uh, I want my money. Um, <laughs> I was telling him, like, it's the perfect, in my opinion, reboot of the Rocky franchise. Like, I wouldn't. Perfect segue, Rick perfect continuation yeah i can't I imagine doing it any other way like rocky balboa was the wrong way to do it having stallone try to come back and box at his age no no you slide him into that mick role it's brilliant and the tie-in of like having like having it be apollo creed's son so right off the protagonist we care about because they tried that in rocky 5 with like this upcoming character tommy gunn who's like an upcoming boxer and he's literally a guy off the street who's just like a bad actor like guy yeah and it's just like just why, a guy. Would, why would i care like this is just rocky's like appointed new protege like i don't care and um kind of like jack courtney or someone like that you know like oh yeah yeah <laughs> if rocky five was made instead of creed it'd be jack courtney <laughs> um well yeah good segue you get a great actor upcoming actor michael b jordan right him and the director have great chemistry from fruitvale station clearly they work together well yeah i just i really liked it a lot i thought it was you know, I can't see how they could have done any better. Had, much like the first one, the heart and soul of, like, an indie movie. But just with, like, that franchise tag of Rocky. Was... And having someone like Ryan Coogler <clears throat> come in, for me, I mean, that I think that's a, it was such a step in the right direction for the franchise. to For Stallone to just kind of step back and let someone put their own perspective on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, hats fantastic. off. Hats off to Stallone. Like, he didn't have to... That's what I'm Give up super control. super nervous about this about seeing this because like the other ones he had his hand he wrote them he directed most of them almost all six out of five out of, out of six sorry, five out of six yeah, yeah. so like, this I'm I'm nervous about this don't be but you can kind of see <laughs> <laughs> thanks yeah. man I'm at oh, ease now you can see how like you can almost you know be too attached to a to a project that it's not Rocky you're Balboa. not letting it develop. Enough, yeah. like you're yeah, sort you of might like George Lucas yourself. Yeah, just blinded by your own project. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Rocky I'm Balboa really great, was guys. the wrong move. No. He couldn't let go, and he had to. He couldn't resist getting back in the ring and giving it another shot. Like that was like the example of what not to do. This is example of what to do. Hand it off to a talented young director, a talented young actor. But then he's still he's still involved because he's still like for me the emotional core Four, of the yeah. movie still there right for sure yeah. um i just yeah i don't want to get into details yet i want to be vague you guys like can... michael b jordan is still the star of this movie but he is the best kind of supporting character for him i think sloan probably has a bigger arc of the two of them as well yeah there's definitely there's definitely an arc to his character and he i personally i the think more, the more emotional arc at least i guess yeah are we wow. thinking they both have they have their own party? they have their own kind of arcs yeah i might argue in the you but, wanna, what did you think of it? Scotty? Well, I was gonna say like I I really enjoyed it. Um, I saw, like I saw Southpaw this this year. This is like a Ooh, step above South, like way above <laughs> Southpaw for me. Really? Um, That's what I've heard. I haven't seen Southpaw. But Stallone was great in it. You know, I don't remember the last time I saw him where I was like, wow, Stallone really gave a great performance <laughs> here. I have something to say about that. Brutal. Um, Loved him. I yeah, I really liked him. He had some funny moments. Um, yeah, overall I liked him. I also liked Tessa Thompson who played yeah, Bianca. She was great. I liked the fact that, you know, normally in a, like there's a love interest, there's no like it's just like a shoehorn like love interest for no like reason, just to, to the, for the fact to have a love interest. But, you know, she had her own 
problems. She had her own aspirations. Yeah, she had, she her, had own her own character. story. This and is I, the si- singer, upstart yeah. singer yeah. girl. Yeah, okay. you know, like she she was she's trying to make it on her own, but like she has, you know, congenital hearing loss or whatever, and you know, she's she. I mean, I could see us. There could be a movie about her. Like they could be a, that could she can have her own movie. Spin-off. Let's pump the brakes there, Scott. I don't I know, know about I'm that. I'm not saying I want to see that. I'm saying her story. There was enough there. Yeah, there's so much. It could have been a story that I could have seen it be the subject of another movie, but they I gave it to a supporting character. Right. That she had her own aspirations. It wasn't just like a hot girl on the side that he was yeah. just you know like yeah. just a random love interest. Like she was a strong character as well, and I like that. Um... The fights. Can we talk about the fights? This is where I want to cut in. Tim. Um, cut right in. I really enjoyed this movie as well. I really, really liked it. The standout, though, I Why? think you guys are going to agree with me. Mm-hmm. I think it's that mm-hmm. second fight. Oh, yeah. I thought Spectre would probably take the cake for the best shot of the year. That the first fucking take? shot. For the fans. Thank there's you. like a five minute, probably. At four, least. Like four or five minute single shot boxing. Match. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Starts with the tunnel. He's speechless, folks. Oh, Ends God. with the fist in the air. My That's... hand was like over a milk the whole time. I was like, they haven't cut yet. They haven't cut yet. And I was hoping they wouldn't. I was like, please don't, like, like, just keep going with this. This is amazing. Keep going with this. And they did. Holy I, shit. I, I want to know. I want to <laughs> see the behind shit. the scenes now. Because Fantastic like... Fantastic shot. Like, how, they, how much rehearsal went into that? <sighs> they come out of the tunnel. They fight. And they're like ducking below the ropes and going outside the ring and then back into the ring and like falling. The... Yeah, the camera movements were like Coming insane. insane it. Was there... Tunnels, like which, where was the fight? Where did the fight take place? It's the, it's the he has the first fight fighting? in Mexico. It's not that fight, and then the next ring fight, like that's actually what it's has where he audience. fights like Stallone's like friend's son. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, it's like I remember the fight. the fight itself. I'm just trying to remember yeah. like the setup. Like first round, they fight, and then you know, you know, bell goes. They're sitting down, yeah. and then they fight again. Yeah. And it's like. Oh my god! Is this gonna cut? Oh my god! It's still going. Yeah, it hit me. I'm like, wow, this is like a really well shot fight. This is really cool. And then yeah, like two rounds in, I'm like, oh my god, they haven't cut yet. Oh my god, they're going for the one or this is amazing. Yeah. And, it and just I, keeps I, going. I, 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 to be fair, like I heard about this before. I don't oh, really. Yeah. I had no idea either. Like I, I just I saw the it scene somewhere. Maybe? Not the scene. What do you mean? That there was a one take fight. Really. And then when I when I when I saw them walking out. I was like, "Oh shit, this is it. <laughs> it's about to get real." Yeah. And even it the did. fact, even though the fact that I kn- I knew, like I knew that it coming in that it was going to be in it, it was amazing for me. Yeah. And it just felt real. And can we talk about what else? What also felt real was like sure. the HBO like twenty four seven videos. Oh, those were so and authentic. The PTI, yeah. pardon the interruption, yeah. like guys oh. talking about. Like, I love that, because those are, like, real, like, real-life things that you see on TV about boxing and stuff like that, and about sports. And to see them, like, talk about, like, Creed, and, like, <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it just makes it seem more real. It lends credence. Oh, I was waiting for someone to drop oh, something. Oh, God. We puns here on the Oh, my God. Wow. Someone showed that our waiting. name is a pun. Guys, I haven't got oh. it yet. <laughs> it's a fishing pun. <laughs> wow. Um... I just I really like that. Yeah. I really like yeah. seeing part of the interruption in there. It, it felt like they I actually laughed. did a twenty four seven on like a HBO twenty four seven on the uh, key. It was fighter. on. It was on like Ricky Conlon and the guy he was fighting. Yeah. And I I also kind of like the I where it pauses. Yeah. And it's like boom like this it's like yeah. it was like a sports like they're like a like a card like a hockey card almost kind of thing like showed all their stats yeah. like some guy walks in he's like yo I'll fight you. And it's like, Doom. pause. 37 like, In his oh, face. Shit, and it's like, Danny, number three boy, heavyweight Smith. in the world. <laughs> like, you know, and it's, I like that. I like that it was like a, it was, it showed like their stats. Like it was almost like Dragon Ball Z, like it's over 9,000. Like, this guy's like, <laughs> like, you see the guy's stats and you're like, oh shit, watch yeah. out for this guy. How great is that first fight where he goes into the gym with his fellow, the wire actor. I don't, I'm, his name escapes me. Also but, Wood, uh, Wood Harris. Yeah. He's also in Dread, Also right? in Dread, yeah. yeah. And, you know, he's just telling him, like, get out of here. This is, like, the hood gym. Like, you, you, like you're like you going to get killed in here. And he just, like, puts up the keys to the Stang or whatever. Yeah. Like, and just bodies this first guy. And then that guy comes in, like you said, and they freeze frame on him. <laughs> and just clocks him. Just done. 
This is the beginning of the movie. It's not like spoiler or anything, but so crazy, guys. The way his head hit the mat. So crazy. I think you'll really enjoy it, Ty. Okay. Yeah, you will. Anything else we want to mention before we get into spoilers or non spoil? Oh well, I'm gushing about it. It Sounds like I'd give it like a five. I guess I'll get into some negatives. Yeah. It started out. Oh my god! Started out a little rocky for me. (laughs) Oh. Oh. I'll be here all week, but um. Um, it was a little slow. It like it picked up so heavy as the movie went along and really got rolling that I forget about the beginning. But the first like the first act, I was unsure. I was like, I don't know how this is going because like I wasn't crazy about him meeting that girl. What's her? Do we know her name? Bianca. Bianca. Uh, I was a little. I don't know. The chemistry wasn't quite there for me. I didn't feel. Felt a little bit of like a shoehorn love interest for me. Like, the exact opposite of what you said. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Scott. Don't kill it's me. always tough to make it believable, I find. You know, yeah, for when, sure. When you have, like, a random meeting and it turns into, like, a love interest, it's like, how do you... Yeah. It's hard to buy sometimes, but... You know. I don't know, yeah, it just, it just felt a little rocky for me. <laughs> a little slow pace. I just used the it's same The story we've seen before, like, it's not, like, a of new course. story. Yeah. That's the... Yeah. Like, only downside, but it's done in such a... It's done in it's, such a good like, way. Like, the performances yeah. are so good that the... The directing is so good that, like, you don't even care. That's what I mean. Like, I don't... Like, I have to be honest. At the time, this is what I was like, feeling. I feel like this feels a lot like the first Rocky movie. That's, like but I said. In a good yes, way. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. In a good, it's okay. like mirroring... Young, up-and-coming yeah. fighter trying yeah. to prove himself. Yeah. He's an underdog. Taking on the wing of someone else. But it, giving this big chance to fight, like, a world champion. Yeah. It's just so... Know, it's just, done in such a great they shot like, it's done so perfectly Ryan, I, I think it all has to do with Ryan Coogler <laughs> for sure I agree 100% and honestly I can't wait to see what he does next me neither um, Fruitvale Station 2 yeah I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to think here what, what I was going to okay. say but. should we do ratings and spoilers that's the thing I'm trying to ask I want to ask a question but I don't think I want to ask the question get spotlighted here so. yeah, so no, no, we'll, we'll shine I'll, the spotlight yeah. on them um I got some ratings I'm going to start us off then um Oh wow, this is tough. This is tough for me. Six banger. Um, I'm gonna go. Not allowed. Four to five reels. Four to five reels. Wow, strong. I liked it for a boxing movie. Four to five reels. Oh. I'm about to rate it wow. on Letterbox Live. Wow. Oh, live first ever live Letterbox rating. Do you Tim hear is that? Li- Tim is live boxing right now. Ding, ding. Yep. His finger just four hit. reels. Get rated. Quite good. Brainmeister. Tyler. I would give it a uh, TBA. Preemptive two. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm gonna go with a light four reels. Oh wow! That's a light, light four reels. Light on the fours. Very well done. Again, like I said, perfectly done. Uh, reboot. All right. I think with that, we'll get into uh, spoilers. All right. I'm just gonna go sit in the corner for. So when Creed dies, it really <laughs> you get out of here. Sorry, dude. You gotta run faster next time. You want to preserve uh, Tyler's virgin eyes. Yeah. Here. Ears. Um, ears. Uh, ears. Well, I guess it'll be a quick look. I don't have a lot to say. Um, we're just waiting for I got, I got, I there, okay, I got. There we go. Okay, we're good to go. Um, there's a couple scenes I want to talk about. Yeah. There's Stallone's emotional moment in the locker room. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. Let's talk, baby. That was. I didn't know he could act. That's exactly Tears how I Tears were coming up in his eyes. I was like, oh my god. I was like, okay, oh um, why did they recast Sylvester Stallone for mm-hmm. one scene? Because yeah. this man's a brilliant actor. So for know. the listeners who are just either seeing this or don't care, <laughs> um, he's diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. Boom. And Michael B. Jordan finds out and, con- and confronts him in, in like a locker room. And they yeah, get there's it. a great emotional right. scene. It's where he's like, he's okay with dying, he doesn't care. His wife went through this, I guess Adrian died in Balboa. Uh, uh, that's something I wanted to talk about, but I figured I it was a spoiler. I assumed that you know her not being in it because I haven't seen Rocky. I, I assumed that she died. Well, well, that's what I was get. I didn't want to reveal what I thought of Creed, but this movie's done so well, it kind of X's out Rocky Balboa. The whole purpose of it, this does the comeback better. It does the emotional core better. Uh, Rocky Balboa opens with a scene that takes place in this movie. It's Rocky and Polly at Adrian's grave, so they don't even show her die. Which really <clears throat> bothered me because, like, the emotional core of the entire Rocky series is Rocky and Adrian. And then they open Rocky Balboa at her gravesite. Like, you don't even get mm-hmm. to yeah. say goodbye to That's that cool. character. That's stupid. She died of cancer. And Polly's with him. And then in this movie, they kind of mimic that scene where he gets his, like, it's literally the exact same scene. 
in Rocky Balboa, he takes a chair out of the tree, sits down, reads the paper at the gravesite. In this one, takes the same chair out of the same tree. I like that scene though, not having seen Rocky Balboa or anything. Yeah, I love the scene in Creed. Yeah, but I'm just like, wow, like this is just like beat for beat, like Rocky Balboa doesn't need to exist. <laughs> yeah, like if I was to refer like someone who's never seen a Rocky movie, watch one through four and then Creed. Wow, like, just skip five. That's surprising Balboa. considering all the. Everything I've heard about Rocky Balboa... Is that pretty I, good? It is. I think you'll agree with me, Scott. We have similar taste, right? Wow. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, but of course, the added thing in this, Polly's grave is right next to Adrian's in Creed scene. So again, they just don't even show Polly die. It's kind of They're kind of ruthless. And that's a vibe I got from this movie, too. I was thinking, this is dark. Like, having watched the whole series... Yeah, I was expecting Sloan to die. I was... So was I. I, I almost wish like, he I did. I thought he was going to die bit. before... Um, Kree got to do his last fight. Like Rocky, we should like, say. You didn't actually expect Sylvester Stallone to die. Old age. Stallone to die. <laughs> mid, no. mid shooting. Um, no, yeah, I thought I thought Rocky would die, and like you, he would miss Kree doing his last fight, and he'd be like really down Amazing. about it. And I thought Kree would like almost not do the fight. Like and dedicated dedicate to, like, to like that's what I was expecting to happen. That would mirror a scene from one of the old ones where Mick but dies. I mean, Rocky do you guys think that that, that that could be? Something that could happen because hey, obviously Creed, they're setting Creed up Creed two. as a franchise here. I uh, heard a rumor we're gonna see Creed two. Did it get greenlit? Do it we has, know it has, it to, has be. to be. Well, I don't know. I the box office for Creed. I, I think it's doing pretty well. I mean, we can double check. Our theater's packed. We had to like ask someone to move over. That's true, it's but we're, so we we were in the small theater. But, but in context, yeah, we we're in the smallest theater they had because this good, good dinosaur came out and Spectre is still doing really well. And Mockingjay Part Two, obviously, it's not a big movie then. Oh Any yeah, and Mocking J Part Two. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. You guys enjoyed? Sorry. Any other scenes you guys enjoyed? You probably stole my favorite scene, like when he that that uh, and the single take fight scene are just incredible. Yeah, for two totally different I mean, reasons too, right? Yeah. Like, I I I do like that it it mirrored the first Rocky and the fact that he didn't win. No, oh, yeah. The last fight. Yeah, I guess we'll get into that. Like, I mean, straight up loses, which I love the balls. But he to won. That. Like that's the thing. Yeah, he won. He still yeah, he, won. Yeah, exactly. That's he the won. Point of he Rocky. won the audi- like the audience's heart. <laughs> it's so cheesy to say that, but he, Cree, he won. Cree, 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 he won in in heart, but he lost. You know, actually in the fight. But you know, it it worked for me. Like it worked for me. Like I, it wouldn't really make sense if he won. Like this guy is a heavyweight yeah. champ. How could he get beat by this like underdog, up and coming guy? Like. It's kind of hard. I love, like, how... Sorry to cut you off. His eyes just fully, just fully swollen yeah, shot. Yeah, and the ref comes up and asks him, like, how much... Uh, oh, oh, how many... That was going great. Up, and, like, the guy Taps just, like... his neck. Toy. Oh, it's so good. It's funny, love too. Uh, the, the cut man for Creed's Corner, the old, like, Mexican guy, he does all the UFC fights. That's a, he's a real cut man. He's, like... I was wondering where UFC I recognized fight. him. He does, like, every UFC fight. Like, every big one. He's the... Yeah, okay, wow. Funny, though, because little continuity thing Rocky goes up to him in the gym and says like yo you know a guy this guy's the greatest cut man in the world blah 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 uh, he's actually the cut man for the, Rocky's opponent in Rocky Balboa so really? it's interesting that they're like BFF now interesting. there's a couple scenes now that I'm remembering that I have to mention please this is what we're here for I got a shit <laughs> how about that that was, hilarious. That was ridiculous <laughs> Broke the tension Guys, so I got a well. shit. I got a shit now. I was like... Uh, so unexpected. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> j- jaw drop. I'm like, what just happened? He's like, yeah. He has his gloves on. He's gloves. like, I, I gotta, gotta take a you shit, You know what, guys. my ass? I don't think so. Cut them, man. Cut them, rock. I love how it, it just showed how, like, nervous he was yeah. for that fight. Like, it was perfect yeah, for me. Yeah, you're right. Wow, when you put it that way, that's hilarious. It just showed, like, he's still, like, kind of a kid, you know? And he yeah. still get, gets yeah. nervous, like, stage fright kind of thing. And... Totally. I loved it. I loved how it broke the tension, like you said, but it was still funny, and but it made sense. I was not expecting Rocky, I guess the twist, Rocky getting cancer also. I, don't, I know we mentioned it earlier, but it was just totally like shocking to me. Did you guys see that coming? I just was like baffled by that. I was like, oh my god. I didn't really see it coming, but at the same time, like when it happened, I was like, yeah, makes sense. okay. Yeah, exactly. It made sense. I thought that's, I'm sure that's how they will like send him off. But I love the emotional punch. Well, no pun intended, dear God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dear God. Of Creed saying, like, no, if I'm like, if I'm going to fight, you're going to fight. Like, if you don't fight this, I won't fight. Yeah. Because he's just, like, accepted death, not wanting to do the chemo and all that. Perfect. And um, 
also people were pointing out like I guess if you haven't seen them all why is Rocky like living in a shithole in Philly uh, cause it's funny Rocky 4 he's got like a mansion Ferraris everything yeah. uh, in 5 Polly like invests his fortune into like really sh- sketchy like garbage companies and just like loses all his money really so yeah it was just like so dark and sad like he lives in his shithole no money his whole family's dead he's a lonely guy and yeah. sad like, really lonely <laughs> and it, it only makes the whole creed rising to fame like that much more emotional because he's like finally has a reason to live it's like it's beautiful the reason it's, it's actually connected to him like it's a personal thing right like it's his friend's kid yeah this is like his family now. yeah there's one other thing I want to mention and how how brutal was I'm not sure if, I'm pretty sure it was the last fight um, you know, in the cutting between scenes, there's shots of like blood, like hitting the mat, yeah. and like when there's a shot of like him getting like someone getting hit hard, and then you just see the cut man just put the vaseline or whatever on the wrist, yeah, and you're like he's he's seen he's seen that massive hit, and then you see him put the vaseline on his wrist. I'm like, oh shit, like getting ready. To he knows he's out. gonna be cleaning. I just liked the way they showed those shots of those other yeah. things. It just I don't know. Just the yeah, there's like, the, yeah, there's like that quick amazing. cut where like you see like the blood hit the uh, the mat, and then there's a quick cut of like the water like wiping up, and then the Vaseline thing. Like it was, it was great for me. But um, I think. Well, I just wanted to say one th- one thing. What did you guys think of the like sending off of his son's character? Did you do you know the thing about like when he he's walking Creed through um, through his house, giving him the tour of his house, and the camera shows a sh- little picture of his son oh, from yeah, yeah. the fourth film mm-hmm. and he says like oh yeah he moved to Vancouver with his girl blah 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 do you know like the reason for that no, no. the actor who played his son in Rocky 4 he died from a drug overdose like last year I think really yeah so that was like their Paul Walker like send off to him like oh he moved away in Vancouver and like lived happily ever after with his wife Wow. So yeah that's cr- like just kind of like a that's throwaway nice. line if you don't know the backstory yeah yeah I wanted to like tap you guys. I'm like, do you guys know what that was? That's crazy <laughs> that they did that. I didn't. It was obviously. really nice. Like, I'm sure Stallone probably For had sure. a word in that, being like, make sure we say this. Give the proper send off. Yeah. I really liked the last scene too, um, where they're walking up the steps that he ran up and you knew it had to happen. Like, he's like, had he's to just like really struggling because he's still like cancer ridden, or like he's he's just come off chemo and he's mm-hmm. still like struggling. Michael B. Jordan's there, like, come on, man, let's do it. Oh, that's rest. Once like once you get to the top and they stand on top and they're like looking out, they're like. It was a great end. It was great Beautiful. End. I loved like the whole vibe that you're basically Michael B. Jordan and you're like living your childhood dream of like getting to train with Rocky and like going on this one last adventure with Rocky. Kind of reminded me of like what The Force Awakens looks like. Like you're John Boyega <laughs> and you're going on like a it's journey. Such a <laughs> you're going on a journey with Harrison Ford through Star Wars. Yeah, and someone's like, come like... on, kid, let's go. He was like your childhood hero almost. Yeah. Which kind of reminds me like when he was like. When he was like watching the YouTube videos of like Apollo Creed versus Rocky. Like, yeah. Like that. Yeah. He was like watching it on YouTube. Yeah. Like I think that was great. That, that's not that's thing. What, I don't know. So, Go ahead. Like it felt very authentic. Just the whole like youthful energy and the youth lifestyle. Like, oh yeah. Where like he takes like a picture of like the workout routine. Yeah. And the and Rocky's like don't thing. you want this piece of paper that has a workout. He's like no yeah. I got it. it. Like that was done so well. And just that he listens to rap music and he's wearing like Jordans. And it's just... Like I said, Rocky Balboa is directed by Stallone, so it just kind of looked like the young people were just a caricature. In this, it, you can tell it's a young guy directing it and like sure. showing you the music they really listen to, the way they really talk. He's like I teaching. Love, I love the uh, the intro song, Tupac and oh, Snoop. Yeah, America's Most Wanted, whatever it was. Amazing, great intro song. I was like getting hype, and that was authentic. I was getting hype, like. Yeah, like in Rocky Balboa, just like Stallone picks some like unknown rap song. It's just like, come on, man. But yeah, but, I think yeah. I think with that, um, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll move into our next review, and that is Spotlight. Um, everyone here has seen Spotlight, right? I yes. Everyone's seen yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, um, I only fell asleep three times. So I saw most of it. Yeah, wow. I didn't have to like lean over and be like, "Hey, bro." You might want to wake up. You might miss it. No way. We did all see what? it really late. Michael Keaton, I think we what? all saw like, like a 10.30 show. Yeah. We saw the, yeah, the 10.30 show. Um, but yeah, Spotlight. Um, this is directed by Thomas McCarthy, starring big cast. Uh, big cast here. Mark Ruffalo, Michael Keaton, um, Rachel McAdams, 
Leif Schreiber, John Slattery, Stanley Tucci, and Billy Crudup. Um, yeah, this movie is um, basically the story of the Boston Globe, um, who investigate allegations against the Catholic Church, um, and sort of a story of how they, yeah, like how they uncover, you know, what's going on with the church's sort of shoving some allegations against them under the rug, and they're basically trying to expose what was happening. Basically, there were these child molestation cases um, against priests, and yeah, church cover-up. Yeah, let's get into it. Um, there's a lot, this sort of, a, it's a hard plot to sort of describe. Um, there's lots of ins and outs to it, but what, what do we think of Spotlight? I will say, this movie is getting huge Oscar buzz. It's on a lot of lists for best picture, best, you know, the actors, you know, supporting um, actors. So knowing that, what do you guys think of Spotlight, Tim? I think we should guess give Mark Ruffalo <laughs> an Oscar. Really? For best supporting actor, he's gonna be at really? least nominated for it. He better be. Hundred percent. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, he stole. He's it transformed from me. himself. Like you can, like he physically looks like himself, but like he's got so many different mannerisms and yeah. his voice is different. Like you can't tell it's the same guy who plays Bruce, like like Bruce Banner. No, it's it was a he was he he stood out of the whole cast for me. Yeah, and Lee Schreiber, who I really liked, he he played a really subtle role. Yeah, but I quite I quite liked Lee uh, Lee Schreiber. Everyone, honestly, everyone in this cast everyone was solid. Everyone was just perfect word, yeah. solid, yeah. solid acting all around. Yeah. This is why I, I don't know if I mentioned it before about ensemble. I feel like best it's, ensemble yeah, should right. be a an award at the yeah. Oscars. This I feel like would win this year. I mean, there's a couple other movies coming up, but amazing ensemble cast yeah. here. You know, Ruffalo, Michael Keaton was great in this. Yes. Um, After I was reading something today, the real life version of Michael Keaton, like his character, um, has come out and saying that like his like Michael Keaton's performance is like crazy good. He's like he feels weird watching Spotlight because he feels like he's watching himself. Really? So apparently, oh, Michael Keaton great. like nailed the guy's voice and, man- and mannerisms and stuff. Yeah, Rachel you never Mc- hear that. Rachel McAdams was great uh, yeah. for me. For Stanley me? Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Always. You know, I I enjoyed him because the Tucci compared to the Tucci Meister <laughs> compared to like the last week when we saw him in Mockingjay, seeing him in this now, like just like just a completely different movie. Was like, he in Mockingjay Part Two? <laughs> for like uh, literally ten he seconds was, he on had, the TV. Okay, well you know what I mean though. But he's very part like, in that role. Yeah, compared to like the the, the Mockingjay before. series, like or the the Hunger Games series, like seeing him in this, it was just. So, like such a good role for him. I, he, just he kind of his role kind of reminded me of um you know I saw Margin Call last week yeah he he kind of reminded me of his his role in Margin Call you guys yeah kind of like down and out kind of like, yeah yeah Ugh, I hate my uh, job but I don't hate my job at the same time uh that guy hate was it he just so beat down by the system yeah Billy Crudup was pretty good as like that kind of like yeah. jackass lawyer yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't talk about that, guys. I can't talk about that. He does have that smug look on his yeah, face, that's, you know? He, he does a good smug look. Yeah. Um, I want to smack the smugness Damn right you, off. Dr. Manhattan. I was yeah. just going to say that Wow. <laughs> Someone had to say it. Someone had to say it. Um, yeah, and anything, any sort of scenes you want to mention here? I mean, the one thing I'll say, I think nothing really, st- I mean, I wouldn't say nothing, but the pace of this movie is almost relentless. I mean, it just, everything, like, it just kind of, everything leads into the next Leads into the next, leads into the next thing. Yeah, there wasn't kind of a lull. It is there's no downtime. Adam might disagree because uh, he passed out a couple times. Three lulls for me. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was very good. Uh, the acting again is great. The writing's great. Directing is is well, yeah, directing good. The style is it's not very stylistic or anything like that. No, but like, very you don't really need it because this is like a, yeah, yeah. Nothing like the cinematography didn't blow me. No, away. Yeah, cookie cutter kind of feel to it. Everything but, takes but place overall. pretty much inside buildings the whole time. I think there's like a couple of outside scenes, gorgeous setting, scenes. gorgeous office setting. Yeah, yeah just offices basically. Like it felt it. pretty like realistic. Yeah, like, yeah. and obviously based on a true story. Yeah. How I do have to mention this isn't really a spoiler, but like the very last like the credits kind of thing. Yeah, it shows where all those allegations were. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I was like, "Whoa, it's still yeah. going." Yeah, the screen is just full of cities where this happened. Like when that first shot pulled up, like people in my theater were like, "Wow!" And then it just like <laughs> showed kept going, more. and everyone just got silent. And we're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, there was like no one in our theater. But yeah. yeah, yeah, me and Scott were like, "Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. this is nuts." Although Toronto wasn't on there, 
No, the worst cities in Canada, though. Really? There, there were a few there. Yeah. That's a little. It's a little weird. Yeah. It's a little crazy. Hopefully, no Whippy. <laughs> no, Whippy was not there. Thank um, God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than Mark Ruffalo, like everyone else was pretty solid. I don't know. Any, anything else stand out for you guys? Uh, any negatives? Um. I haven't even. I don't think you've asked me what I thought of it. Actually, what do you what do you think of it, Adam? Thank you. Um, what what you saw of it? Yeah, what a piece of shit. I'm just kidding. Uh, I liked it. It was. I I would say it's it was all substance and no style. Yeah. So I, that's kind of a backhanded compliment. It's it's kind of good. Kind of yeah. There's not much style here. Which I do need. Like I like. I don't, Everyone likes to shit on movies that are all style, no substance. I don't think it's fair to not do that in the reverse sense, where there's like literally no style being brought to it at all. Ty looks like he's confused. I no, I want to, I want to agree with you, but I like, I, I don't want to like, like I'm not saying you're, you're, you're right, and I don't want to agree with you on that just because fair. it is kind of it's. <laughs> you don't want to. Agree it, with it, it is like a, like you said, a, a backhanded. It is compliment. you. And, yeah. I, no one wants to agree with me. A hard time agreeing with what comes out of your mouth, but um, <laughs> no, I just I, I do think I really what you say was a backhanded compliment. But like it, I it enjoyed true, it. Though. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm yeah. saying there's no. It's like you said, like there's like certain elements to a movie. Obviously, like direction, performances, like cinematography, story. Yeah. And obviously, like you know, the visual aspect is a me is a huge part of a yeah, film. It's a film. And like, even like if your was... performances are amazing and great, solid like this movie. And the story is intriguing and, you know, really, you know, brings you into it. But if there's no style or there's no visual interest, then it might not be. just, yeah, the entertainment, like, factor wasn't really there for, like, certain, like, the cinematography was just so generic and, like, normal. Like, nothing interesting. Yeah, like, I don't know how rewatchable this is going to be for me. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Which is a very Academy thing, right? Like, they don't worry about that usually, right? It did feel a bit like an information dump for me. Uh, But my favorite part was obviously the performances. Like, uh, you guys... felt real, you know? Well, yeah, I thought Michael Keaton was the standout for me. You guys were, like, really high on Ruffalo. I really liked Ruffalo. I think Ruffalo was the standout for me, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I loved Keaton because I was not expecting a Boston accent. That just I was like, whoa! And he didn't do it over the top. He did it like perfect. Yeah, he was subtle. Yeah, it was. Subtle. I didn't even notice. Again, yeah. I read this today. He was, he was not going to take this role initially because he found out he had to do a Boston accent. He wasn't really? sure if he could do it. And okay. then he heard the guy speak in real life, and he like has a faint Boston accent. He's There's like, like certain All words. Right, I can do this. <laughs> like every <laughs> fifth word yeah. or tenth word. Yeah. Uh, Ruffalo, I was more <laughs> distracted by because he was so different. I was like, whoa, this is like, I don't know, it was just so jarring. In a good way, though. I liked uh, watching his character because yeah. he was such a relentless journalist. For relentless, sure, yeah. yeah. Hungry. He, yeah, hungry yeah, for the story. For sure, hungry true. to expose, you know, the Catholic Church in this yeah. film. Yeah. Rachel McAdams was uh, pretty, like, good. Yeah, she was yeah. fine, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not bad, like, yeah. She, I wouldn't, her character, there wasn't like a huge like emotional like I don't know. Or no, no, yeah. it wasn't like a huge arc. Her character didn't have like, a huge arc or anything. Yeah, although she did have some good moments. She where, get some, some where she was interviewing some of the people. You, you yeah, like door her. door, like those yeah. scenes were were pretty good. I um, just wanted to mention uh, speaking of the performances and stuff, IndieWire, which does their annual like nominations predictions for the Oscars. They're mm-hmm. usually really really spot on. They have three of the act, three actors of the five are spot on. I see where you're laughing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, three of the five actors we've talked about today. Fifth, Tom Hardy, Revenant. Fourth, Mark Ruffalo, Spotlight. Mm-hmm. Third, Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spies. Second, Michael Keaton, Spotlight. And first, Sylvester Stallone, Creed. Wow. Interesting. That's who they're betting so on. So they have Michael Keaton and Ruffalo. Yeah. The soul Nominated. Like, and I thought that was interesting because I'm like, okay, is Michael Keaton best actor? I thought Michael Keaton was best actor. No, he'd be best supporting. Again, it comes back it, to the. It's an ensemble. An ensemble the thing, thing is, it's, there's no one character here. Yeah. The movie's not star. about Michael Keaton. He just happens to be like one of the people there. Yeah, I guess he is. Right? A, but like, so would Mark Ruffalo be best actor? No, like, he's best supporting as well. There there's, be, no there there's no lead. There's no lead. There's no lead in this. So they have yeah. to have two supporting. And can they do that? Two supporting in the same movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. time. You can do that. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because, uh, I, Although, I don't know why they wouldn't like focus I'd be on one. Rylance getting a nomination for. You did, I remember. Well. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see. I that. think that list is spot on. Like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Be. 
Like I meant to say, like Stallone. Like I think he's guaranteed getting a nomination. Obviously, we haven't seen The Revenant, but yeah, we all I mean, have high hopes for it. But Some I love Tom have. Hardy, so he better get a nomination, and so should Leo. There you go. Um, I was gonna say like the uh, Screen Actors Guild Award. They do do a best ensemble. Um, and I think, like, it's safe to say this it's is gonna, this will probably win this year. Be up it's because there's right. movies we haven't seen, but there's no way they have, like, there's no, like, ensemble. big ensemble piece yeah. like this. Hopefully, like, maybe big. I mean, I could see Big hopefully. Short. Actually, big Short would have a big, I could see Big Short being nominated. Obviously, it, Christian Bale, you know, like, Brad yeah, Pitt, Big Short, too. And it's a similar movie. Yeah. Ryan Gosling, that's a big cast. It's funny, though, you mentioned Hateful Eight. It literally did win Best Ensemble at the Critics Awards. <laughs> so I guess that is a huge, uh, Huge thing eight that could steal it from Spotlight. Eight, eight big stars. <laughs> there you go. At least. Least. Anything, anything um, else we want to mention? I, I mean, this movie has 97% right. of Rotten Tomatoes. How loud is that? So, should we call it a lock for Best Picture, Nom? I'm going to say yes. Is it safe to say? Although, there's... I don't know how much competition there is, right? There's like, what, Bridge of Spies, Revenant, Danish Girl, maybe. For me, like, Sicario is going to be a snub this year, <laughs> yeah, I feel. I think it's going to be a snub. Gonna get snubbed. Yeah. It's kind of getting forgotten right now, which is yeah. really Well, they can go up to movies. not, like, they usually go up to nine movies, so there's a lot of room It's possible, for it. but I have a feeling it's going to get forgotten, which is disappointing. I know, so do I, which, yeah, sucks. That Deacons. I mean, there's usually not many best actress choices to choose from, so I think Emily Blunt could be in there. I know yeah. Deacons will be in there for cinematography. Better get a nom for cinematography. I will to. lose yeah. it. You better win eventually. <laughs> you better win eventually, is right. Um, Still in Blade Runner 2. Yeah. yeah. I don't so, have much to say on spoilers. There's nothing really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so we, can, to, we can get into spoilers now. Yeah. Um, spoilers. Oh, spoiler we got to rate it. For the spoiler section. Whoa. We've done that 21 weeks in a row, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Give or take. Yeah, rate it, rate oh, snap. It. All right, let's get into it. I'll um, give it a zero, Scott. Oh, shit. Wow. I'll give it a light three. Reels. Light three. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. Just kind of Oscar This is tough. Yeah, this, bones, this, 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 this is tough for me. Um, I'm going to go light. Light four or five reels. I, 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 I enjoyed it. It was it was good. It was really good. Next. Right Tim. there with you, Scotty. Light four. Tyler. Next. Tyler. Did we... Did we really get... No, you thoughts? didn't. You just grazed right over me. It was like I was back in the corner of my music or anything. <laughs> wow. Why don't you just spit out your vague thoughts? I loved this movie. Holy it was shit. so real. What? Really? It was surreal? It was It was surreally surreal. It, it, this, for me, is a four. This is a four. Four reels. Nice. M- like a, a mid four. Mid four. Because I do that. Did Not a light four. You want to maybe articulate what you loved so much? Uh, the, the nice thing is because I always love love musical like this because they, they kind of go not necessarily against the grain, but they do they do like they're they're going to making a movie that is really against something like, like against like they really exposing should, something expose kinda. something. And I always love movies that do that. Yeah, because you know someone Educated. had the balls I, to go and do something like that. And this one here, this is something that should like I feel should have been done. A thousand times but it hasn't been done yet and true. That's it true. it really it did put a spotlight on this wow. on yeah on this the issue on this, on this issue this 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 current situation and you know what still you know, happening you know what's kind of i don't know disappointing for me not mm-hmm. disappointing but kind of surprising yeah the fact that there was a spotlight shown like shown shot sean 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 yeah on this issue back then yeah but Yet, I didn't realize it now. No. Like, this isn't an issue that... Because obviously... I mean, I, this is definitely still happening. It is. It this is an issue. This day. is a current issue. And, you know, when this movie comes out and you see, you know, this issue. And, you know, I don't know. It's just shocking to me that this was a big thing. You know, in this movie, obviously, they, they exposed this issue. Mm-hmm. And yet, it's something that we've now almost forgotten about. Uh, yeah. That it's I mean, an issue. And it gets pushed under the rug. And... I think this movie is it's one of those important movies that it really you, know, you it, need to see to sort of understand what's is, been going on it's so real that, that's like I keep coming back to that it's just it's something that's so real and they portrayed it in such a, a real real way that you know but this for me this got very emotional for me I, like I I really enjoyed this movie and like you it was with it. I did and yeah. the I I cried in this movie holy at what point did the tear you drop you felt emotion it was the end of the movie 
and I really? and I just it it was too much I and it, it got that. to me. Yeah, to, I think to, I saw it with Tim. I think Tim your could heart tell. was capable of feeling emotion. His eyes were a little watery. Yeah, I thought he had just woken up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I and that's fair because I just woke up from a nap. And that's but. fair. But this oh, was it was just it's something that happens. The you know, emotion was felt. It yeah, because like this stuff Beautiful. goes on every single day, and it's just it, it's something that should have There's been done. Victims yeah. that don't speak out. And yeah. It's, but yeah, this is a this good. is a this is a four for me. Nice to see you love something. Yeah. <laughs> Other than just me. Just a quick little fact: you've left someone off that cast. Mister Richard Jenkins, uncredited voice on the telephone. That Mark Ruffalo was talking to. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Richard Jenkins. Wow. I also wanted to just throw out if we're talking about uh, unspoken about parts of people making the movie, the director Tom McCarthy. Yeah. I just looked at his filmography. The Cobbler. Holy shit! Station Agent in two thousand three. Yeah. Win win. Good like good movie that people have never talked about. That's on my list. Hidden That's gem. Peter Dinklage, right? Last year's colossal flop, The Cobbler with Adam Sandler, and now Spotlight. Shocking. He also did uh, Win Win with Paul Giamatti. He's like the basketball coach or whatever. Right. Yeah. I and haven't then heard he was also before. in season five of The Wire, playing a the newspaper dir- reporter. A- the director, the director played. Yeah. He's an actor as well. Oh, okay. Wow. He also has a story credit on Pixar's Up. Yep. <laughs> so, this guy's all over the map. Incredibly yeah. diverse. I think he cooked me a hot dog once <laughs> at, at uh, Five Guys Burgers and Fries. Yeah, he's just a great Studying guy. Studying for a role. He's just there. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, we can diverse. get into the spoilers um, now that we've given our reviews. Is there anything really we want to mention? I mean... It's not really surprising that yeah. they finally. Ex- spoilers, it's not much good. to say. No, I don't really have a lot of spoilers to say. Not, not much to. It's go not with. one of those stories where like. Nah, there's not a huge twist. I mean, obviously, like, things get exposed in the end. Yeah. Like, duh. Things get brought to light. Yes. In certain spots, some would say. Yeah, certain spots of the movie were brought to light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank that you, is Adam. correct. Um. Yeah, not, I got nothing to say really. Yeah, really, there is there is nothing to spoil. This movie is just it is it's, it's an all expose. there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all there. Yeah, sure. Why well, right. was wait? I have something. Yeah. I thought Richard Slattery, John uh, John Slattery, was the guy who buried the story. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, like yeah. A few years before they had found, I found out about this, they had been sent documents in the past about priests cover up. This was Michael Keaton's one up. This is what is his his boss Bill, I think his name was. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, okay. yeah. I was I was so sure. And it was someone coming. had like received these papers and just hid it because they didn't think it was a big like a big enough story. They hid it like some shitty part of the newspaper that, that, that no one reads. No you find out it's Michael Keaton. That's why he's so driven. Well, he didn't even re- realize it actually. He t- totally. And that was that was a great moment the f- when Keaton realized like, wow, like I was the one that buried the story before. Yeah. Like this is horrible. Yeah. And really? then the fact that you I did. May have- been sleeping. That? I do Chips not recall. Sarah, you're asleep for this. Like Ra- Rachel chance. McAdams, like puts an article on his table on his desk, and like, hey, like read this, and then like he reads it, and he's like, okay, thanks. Like this is, I buried this. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Like I, this is yeah. soul crushing. Thank you. For this. <laughs> Thank you. Like wow, I Rachel, ruined it was my me. own life. <laughs> like I don't know. I, I thought that was a great moment, and I I was surprised. Like I, when John Slattery, there's a moment, there's a scene in this movie with Ruffalo where like it got like weird, like. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. When Slattery shows up to his apartment, yeah, 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 I thought he was gonna. I was like, like something weird's going on with him. Yeah. If he, this wasn't based this on a true pizza? on a true story, I was like, this is a scene where like Slattery murders, <laughs> yeah, someone like, because he's found out like a secret. Like yeah. had a super creepy vibe. Yeah, it's but then, kinda, it, like, then it didn't, it, they didn't go back to that. No, no like, they just kind of blew over it. Like you're kind of waiting for it to come back. And yeah, it, I was it, like, it okay, John Slattery is like the bad guy here. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what I was getting at, and then he wasn't. I was like, oh, so nice. Like he poisoned his beer or something like yeah. that. Like something was gonna happen, but nothing. Yeah, but yeah. I just, I was just an interesting kind of. There's one scene. One little thing in particular that kind of was kind of weird. I kind of want to get your guys' opinion on it. It was when they were uh, they were talking to uh, Rich McAdams finds one of the uh, the old ministers. I'm, I was I'm, literally about to say that. Yeah. Yeah, and you're Holy so shit. open about it. Yeah, he was like, "Well, yeah, That's I, what's I, them. I didn't, I didn't rape them though. I, I, sure, I molested them and I fooled around, but I didn't." Rape them. Do you guys like what is that? Can That's you crazy. Explain that to me. That's crazy. What, what the, he, the, all it was was he was just psychotic. Like, yeah, he was just insane. Yeah. Like he had been. I think in my mind he had been been so confused by all this 
religion he was just just thrown into his brain like it was kind of just messed with his mind like that that's that's what I think those are the scariest really? kind of people that yeah. they believe that they don't what they're doing is normal. they don't understand that what they're doing is wrong the yeah. greater good kind of thing but they don't see past all the shit that they're going through I thought it was like because there's never any anyone attempting to like uncover the story he thought he was untouchable so he yeah. was just like fuck it yeah I did it like we all know that but no one's ever gonna put the spotlight on me <laughs> and it was actually it was, it was pretty great scene or moment I guess in the movie where they're like they find there's like 13 priests or whatever that they found in the in Boston like metropolitan area that had these cases against them and when they found out that no actually there's 90 yeah, yeah. at least at least 90 yeah. like that was like whoa like guys we're way in over our heads here yeah the Boston area also yeah. known as Toronto <laughs> you guys know this movie shot in Toronto Right. So you look at me like I'm I didn't know that. Okay, well, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell is he talking about? A lot of Boston movies front, or are filmed in Toronto. A lot of movies. A lot of movies in general. general. Room. Room style. There wasn't quite that moment where I was like, whoa, that's Toronto. Because so so. yeah. that does irk yeah, you they had it. There was one scene where I was like, is that the Toronto archives? Like, there's, it lo- literally looked, because I've been to Toronto archives, like it looks... There was, they, I don't know. They may have shot that. Maybe the exteriors weren't, but the interiors Yeah, were, like the like, interior, like it looked stuff. like... Toronto archives. I'm, I'm not. I'm not crazy. It looked like it. I could be wrong. Sure, sure, Scott. Scott. Yeah, okay. I could, I could, I could be wrong, but it's I, Boston is very similar, like kind of architecture and interior architecture. So I understand it, but obviously the exterior was Boston. But yeah, I think I think with that we'll move on um, from spotlight. We'll move out of the spotlight. Um, <laughs> Let's shine the spotlight on a on trailer. something else. And we've tried that <laughs> news this week. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that is Captain America Civil War trailer drop this week, guys. Get hype. <laughs> um, Get hype. So much we've heard in the past year about casting, Spider-Man, you know, Black Panther. Is that Spider-Man? I don't... Just crazy, crazy news about it. But finally the trailer came out. What do we think of the uh, Civil War trailer? Tyler, start with you. This took me by surprise because really? I was not expecting this to come out until like no, December. I heard no news about it, no hype. It just kind of popped up. It wasn't even like leaked first and then he decided to leak. It just no. came out. I heard this wasn't coming. This is going to be attached to The Force Awakens because of, because of Disney and all. I, I was afraid, like, I assumed it would be attached to that. Yeah, Makes right? But, I heard that but it wasn't. It, it just it kind of just appeared out of nowhere. I was like, hey, do you see the Civil War trailer? Uh, no. I wonder if maybe it might have got. Maybe they got wind that it might get leaked or something. Play I'm wondering. They're well, like, guys, let's, let's get ahead of the storm. We should mention um, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans brought it to Jimmy Kimmel and yeah. did like a ten minute interview and then showed it at the end. Oh, at wow. the end, so well, there you go. So Marvel like had a whole rollout for this thing. They didn't just like drop it on the internet after it was leaked, like the Age Here, of Ultron go. trailer, so, yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Hmm. But it was, it was weird because yeah, like it was officially supposed to be attached to Force Awakens, and then they're like, no, we're gonna make. I guess that is Marvel's mo. They always make a, a big event of anything they do, and they're great at it. For sure. Like they mm-hmm. just building hype. They're great at building hype. Yeah, yeah, they just announced it on Jimmy Kimmel. It's huge. But what do we think of this trailer, though, Tyler? Let, let, let's let's start with you. Do you like this trailer? Do you, does this excite you? I do. Uh, it's nice to. Uh, it, it's kind of. I, I like seeing everyone all together, but at the same time, it feels like it's they're going in too too much of a uh, an Avengers direction for me. I did not get that feel. No, I this think. is pretty heavily. This is what I was worried about. Is that it's just going to feel like Avengers. a lesser version of Avengers? That's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of getting. But you're getting a lot of Captain America in this. Yeah, which I'm glad that's... about because Winter Soldier is probably my favorite Marvel movie. Would you, would you say you're your team Cap? Some gap on this one. I'm really? sorry. Oh my god. Yeah, this this that's the main point <laughs> I was going to bring up. The fact that this feels like a continuation of Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yes. And I was afraid. Which is crazy. With all the casting, it's just going to get bogged down by all these other actors, all these other heroes in here. I'm still yeah. kind of distracted by all of them. That's the problem, but I think. I'm not. I feel like there's enough. The focus is right. Yeah, the focus it's still is Captain on America. Captain America. Okay. The focus is on Falcon. And, and Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Which mm-hmm. is Those Iron three. Man. And then Iron Man, and obviously Iron up. Man is the antagonist of this movie, which I love. Which is played brilliantly. Yeah, like some in would the say. Trailer. Some would say. Yeah. That's one opinion. <laughs> um, I know what we you know. You love. love that. Are you guys surprised by the way it went? I had I talked to Adam briefly about this. That was a surprise at the way that 
they've decided to go with it is that Captain America is siding with having no at first over body or like overseeing body and Iron Man's like no we should be like should we wait to get in this and just say what we thought of the trailer overall or are we just diving in because like I, sure. I guess it's we're not bear, like we're not bearing the lead we all like the trailer yeah but I, I don't know yeah, what, I really liked it. Like it no I know I liked it it's just yeah. I, I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to feel too heavy on all the rest of superheroes and not focus specifically on Captain America but as a trailer as a trailer I didn't enjoy a trailer it. by itself yeah I did enjoy it I loved it if I could just jump jump right on in I've been more like they announced this movie before Age of Ultron so I just pretty much like looked past Age of Ultron right to this movie yeah it wasn't was so high. Age of Ultron yeah neither was I it was it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. It was fun, but I'm way more hyped for this movie. And like you guys, Russo brothers for me. Yeah, you guys hit the nail on the head. Mm-hmm. It still feels it feels like a Winter Soldier sequel. Yeah. Like I feel like if I had seen Winter Soldier and jumped straight to this one, I, I'd be good to go. Right. I was scared it was going to feel like just a, another Avengers movie, but no. Like Captain America's obviously the main focus when he's like letting out Bucky from the trap and. Like, oh, some guys are coming, and they're not planning on taking you alive. And they just start running. I'm like, boom, I'm in. Let's go. Like, yeah, fuck like, you. Take my money. <laughs> still on the run from, like, the government. Like, I like that aspect of Winter Soldier. How yeah. he was, like... Of course. Like a rogue. Like, AWOL kind of thing. Nation. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I liked it. Um, you know, we get to see... Actually, you know, I Black take back Widow. what I said. About? 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 <laughs> Um, but not oh, understanding why, like why they take the sides that they do. Okay. Okay. Because Captain go? America yeah. has had some bad run-ins with the government. Yes. Makes total yes. sense. <laughs> and although Iron Man, is no, still no, odd for that choice. No, it's not. Uh, it's, has he learned from Avenger from Asia, from Asia Ultron? Look at everything that he's done. It's all, it's all been to protect mankind. Everything he's done has been to look, look you mean at those weapons that he was making for years. <laughs> that kind of backfired. Okay. No. 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 Okay. Oh, that God. was okay. No. Even that. Look at the first movie. Everything past the first movie is all him turning turning over a new leaf. That is the whole, yeah. I I know if you look at the core of like Iron Man, he's the core of this whole MCU, and that was the whole point. He's trying to redeem himself. Let's look at Age of Ultron. Ultron. The entire movie was about him trying to tr- trying to save mankind. Every Iron Man movie has been him trying to redeem himself. Exactly, and so that's all this is. Scumbag. It is it is literally him saying that we need to register all these people with superhuman abilities or powers so that we can control this we can't let everything get out of control so that's that's, that's so odd because like he's so you'd think so that's, that's, what I was afraid, that's what i thought yeah he's so rebellious like he made a robot that like literally almost destroyed the world yeah yeah i, but thought I think it, yeah. that's what he's saying that's what's lending him to being like whoa yeah. let's make sure it's just i guess like, because like, adrian ultron filled on a lot of levels to like set up the future where like the movie doesn't end with him feeling bad about it Right, right. He's, he's like okay with what Cap. he did, essentially, and him and Cap leave on good terms. Well, he tried, right. which is more than any of them did. So, and and we haven't obviously this doesn't reveal that much about the movie. No, and their kind of motivations, they you don't really yeah, see it because obviously there's a catalyst here that leads to these events of them going against each other. I feel obviously, the catalyst is going to be them breaking out the Winter Soldier. I think it's going to be what more. I think this. I mean, there's going to be some collateral damage. Like something's going to happen. Yeah. People are going to die. And, and then they're going to realize... I can tell you what it is in the comic. I don't yeah, know. I mean... It's going to be totally different from the comic. Obviously, yeah. there's an event in the comics that happens. They blow up a school of kids. Yeah. Some terrorists. Yeah, people die. Um, some, like, Hydra people. Collateral damage, basically. Which is not and, Marvel style, so we'll see what they do. And they pass... Yeah, they're not going to blow up kids, yeah. I don't think. <laughs> well, well, who knows? Deck, I, mean, they're, maybe. I mean, with, like... You know, this is one, one, one way to plug this. Yeah. But the Marvel yeah. TV shows yeah, it is. have gone a lot darker. There mm-hmm. we go, sweaty. Do you? Yeah. Th- I mean, do you guys think they could they could do go as dark as that? Because obviously, no. like Jessica Jones and Daredevil. <laughs> you guys didn't need to see Jessica Jones and get on my level right now. We know. We know. I've seen it. It's pretty good. Do you guys think that that movies could get that dark? Because obviously, like they're trying to keep it PG and everything. I you know, know they've always said they want to keep their movies, pre- like their yeah. movies and TV series separate. So I feel like if they want to go dark, it makes sense to do it on the TV show. TV shows. This was a Netflix movie. I would see. Yeah, they would do. Do so you think that they're going to keep the movies pretty light? A little bit lighter, just because yeah. they their audience is like. Yeah, it's a lot of kids. over half their audience is yeah. kids. They're not going to show a school of kids getting blown up. Did you guys like the first footage of Black Panther? Because I've been pumped for his solo movie for a while, and he looks pretty badass. Speaking of reveals, he looks I mean, sick. He 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 looks great, but again. 
how does he fit in? Why is he there? That's Why right. does he pick the side that he's, yeah, he's on? Like but that's great running. that they haven't shown any of that yet. Yeah. I like that. I don't want to know why. I d- exactly. I I'm not watching another, like, exactly. like another trailer. This yeah, gets me I'm good perfectly to go. hyped for this movie. Yeah. I don't want to see like a scene, then like release a scene where it's like him like revealing why he's joining. Like I don't want to see that. That reminds me, uh, Batman vs Superman. The new trailer comes out tomorrow. Like that first trailer was like over th- three minutes. Like I don't need to see anything more. This trailer, perfect. It's like the perfect tease. Just I'm good to go. Don't need anything more than good action seen. shots you know I like that Cap- the, I was going to say Captain Falcon oh my god that <laughs> Falcon uh, Falcon kick <laughs> should I say that where he like he, he spins like that spin kick like that was a good that was good yeah like yeah uh, speaking of kicks how about that jump two legged drop yeah, kick yeah two legged yeah. drop yeah. kick I don't know who what, who kicked who there but it was amazing Cap obviously Cap someone yeah it was Cap he's always got the black crazy Panther? acrobatic yeah I think he was kicking Black Panther there I could have no, been a generic, like a generic soldier. Soldier, yeah, but I remember black. Generic soldier number four. But there is that crazy car chase looking scene where it's not a car chase, but Captain America is like chasing after Black like Black Panther on top of like cars and stuff. Well, when he turns sick. the jets on, yeah. it's like. I think Panther, spirit. Black Panther is going to give him a run for his money. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he looks nice. sick. He looks great. But it's going to Usain Bolt. G- guys, I mean, obviously, like, there's a scene where he's holding onto a helicopter. <laughs> I. How wild is that? I just noticed that we just watched the trailer before we started recording. That was my third time seeing it. Just noticed that for the first time. He's just straight up and holding I heard, down a helicopter. I heard some comments. I heard some comments. I'm not sure who it was by. Maybe the actors or the directors or someone. You know, talking about the trailer and what we may have missed. It was right. people involved. Okay. That scene apparently is like a pretty emotional. Like there's a there's a meaning behind it. It's it's so a it's not big just like scene. like a Schwarzenegger moment. It's like someone inside yeah. of the chopper. Yeah, yeah. it means like it's a, a the scene like means a lot. Back. And you know he's fighting, and it's it's kind of like they kind of equated it to like, you know, if there's a car stuck on someone, you get that mm-hmm. adrenaline to like lift a car. Yeah. Right. It's like Cap's thing. getting that adrenaline, that oh. even more adrenaline. Yeah. It's like there's an emotional like mo- this emotion behind what's going on there in that scene. I think that's gonna be that's, that's gonna be seen to watch out for. Well, I, I, I have a tie-in. Obviously, that's tie insane. Oh. I know you like him. I do. Uh, and I won't try to make it an Adam's tie-in. Good. I will give you your credit. Thank sir. you, because you're not Scott. a sick human being. Yeah. My apologies. Um, <laughs> speaking of Black Panther, I don't know if you guys have heard, rumor has it the Creed director, Mr. Ryan Coogler, is in talks with Marvel to helm Black Panther. Yep. So have, they, have they really not picked the director yet? They no. Haven't? No. Really? They now just that, picked the writer. Now that I would love. After seeing Creed. It's literally the perfect fit. Still, I will be furious if it's not him. No. Still not a lot going on. Like, we don't, still don't know a lot about this movie. The, 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 the Black Panther movie. I just, I love the glimpse. I saw them in the trailer. Like, he looks, just visually, looks like a badass. I love that, like, sprint. I guess, maybe that's one of his, like, powers. Yeah, yeah he's definitely, like... So we've yeah. seen Super his speed. villain, Andy Circus popped say, up. In, right. in, 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 love Andy Circus and Ultron. I can't wait to see more of him. No, is he confirmed for the movie? De- he is. Yeah. He is. Okay. He is. Good. Okay. Um, I want to see it shot in Africa, hopefully. Like yeah. In Wakanda. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I'm hyped for that movie yeah. for sure. Just wait for. And Andy- if it's Ryan Coogler, like we just said, oh my god. Just perfect. wait for Andy Circus's bionic arm. It's definitely coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's coming. I mean, it's straight out of the comics. But yeah. There's just one other thing I want to quickly mention. It was a quick shot of um, Bucky jumping out of a window mm-hmm. and then off a building and it looks like the camera is going to follow him down and if that camera follows him straight down with the whole jump that's going to be my favorite shot of the whole year <laughs> doesn't that shot I mean I mentioned it while we watched it doesn't that remind you of like Jason Bourne? Bourne it does feel like a lot the shot of him Bourne. jumping off and, and then the camera like falls behind him Jason Bucky if that camera literally follows him straight like straight to the ground if they do something like that crazy well, great. the Russos impressed the shit out of me in Winter Soldier with their choreography of like action yeah. stunts and sequences. I think they're gonna do something like that. Yeah. Something. And there's insane. a couple shots like of you know, there's a shot of um, Captain America. You know, there's a kind of a railing, a stair railing, and there's a shot like through blinds. I don't know, like the cinematography like looked looked really and good when as he's, well. Like, just when he's running, getting blown up from the side, and he has this shield great, out. Great <laughs> action <laughs> shot. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Great action. And shot. And we should mention. Well, I want to mention. What that line to like the best line of dialogue yeah. in the trailer? Mm-hmm. Some great lines um, from Iron Man. Mm-hmm. The so was I line. Yeah, the like we were friends. 
so were we. I butchered yeah. it. I don't know. Did I get it right? Yeah, you were, you were close. Whatever. Great line. Locked People are in. eating that up. People yeah. are loving that. I like when... Uh, emotional punch. When uh, Tony Stark's like... I just want to punch you in the like in the perfect smoke way, cell, your right perfect little teeth. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Marvel's like so good at writing for their characters; they know the essence of each character's personality. Marvel's just amazing. Even general. even when he walks out of the um, elevator, and like you look defensive, cuts them holding the shield. Like it's just yeah. well, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's perfect. Like just perfect. Tony Stark. I loved it. Yeah, for me, I just can't. I just can't wait to see his movie now. I just. I hope they don't do the pull an Ultron. Just and give just, it too familiar? No, I mean, like, the marketing for Ultron, like, was way, oh, way too overboard. many scenes. Just blast you with everything? Just drop a bomb on you with the marketing, basically. <laughs> yeah. A marketing bomb. Basically, they just carpet bombed us, basically, with marketing. Um, I'm praying they don't. I hope they don't. But this first look, I love it. I know you guys all agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think with that, we have nothing else to say. That'll do it for episode 22 of the Up Real Late podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Up Real Late. I feel like I usually say something else. Oh, you can Your follow Twitter. me on Letterboxd Letterbox, at Up Real wow. Tim. That seemed a bit short. Yeah. You can see like, why Tim's Creed rating, which he... Wow. In my spotlight. You should type out. in the review section, <laughs> this was rated live on yeah. Up Real Late. You can follow us on Facebook at Up Real Late Podcast, as well as on Instagram at <laughs> Up Real Late Podcast, uh, as well as you can follow me on Twitter at Mogi6, M-O-G-E-Y-6, as well as on Letterboxd at uh, Up Real Tie, T-Y-E. You can follow his non-activity <laughs> on Letterboxd. <laughs> Getting better. Um, Have you put Spectre up yet? Probably no. not. Uh, disgusting. Anyways, Thanks. you can follow me on Thank Twitter, you. Adam, at F R A N E Y 25. That's Franey 25. And on Letterboxd, at Upreal Adam. Real like a movie. Real. You can follow me, Scott, on Twitter at S underscore Ellis 71. You can also follow me on Letterboxd at Upreal Scott. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys, keep it real. Flip it.